Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano, and this is part of my Piano Quick Tips series. In this short video, I'm going to go over all of the ornaments in Chopin's Nocturne in E flat. So we're gonna get started right away with measure two. And if you look carefully in your treble clef, you will see on beat three, what's called a turn. It looks like a sideways S. There's a flat symbol above it, and there's a natural symbol underneath it. And what that means is instead of just playing, it means you're gonna play five notes on this C. So the turn in this case, you're gonna play C, and then the flat is telling us instead of playing D, which is in our E flat scale, we're gonna play D flat, then we go back, play C, and then we play the note underneath. And again, that natural symbol is saying, don't play B flat in our scale, but play the B natural. So it's all half steps for this turn. They suggest starting with two, which is fine. You could also start with one. So you could do either starting with one or two is fine. Actually, there's many ways to finger this. So whatever works for your hand, but you do want to have the last C be with your thumb. You could do one, three, one, two, one, five. The other thing is the timing. So the first C is going to go with the left hand chord. Then we're going to have four notes in between. The next notes go together. So first note, four notes in between. So here's how it sounds. And they don't have to be super even you can be very expressive with the way you play those five notes so in measure five look for the first group of 16th notes here in the right hand you'll see what looks like a couple of v's put together that is called a mordant and what that means is you're going to play the note f the note above it and back to the f so that means you're going to play three notes instead of one and the notes will be f g and f in terms of the timing you can either have the second F go with the chord, or you can have the first F go with the chord. So here it is with the first F with the chord. Here it is by having the second F with the chord. Pianists play that both ways. Our next ornament is in measure seven. It's a trill. Actually, this measure has two things. It has a trill and then it has two grace notes, those really small notes coming before the second big group of notes, the E and F, those are called grace notes. So the trill, you're gonna start on the note F and you're gonna go back and forth between F and G, whichever fingering works well with you. And you can either do what's called a measured trill, which means a set amount per beat. So you might choose to do four notes with every left hand note. Or you might choose to just let it jiggle and not have a set amount for the left hand. So either of those are okay. If you noticed, I stopped the trill a little bit early so I could put in the grace notes, those other small notes. Those are gonna come after this chord, but before this left hand note. So we've got trill, and in terms of the fingering, uh, my addition here says one, three, two, that's fine. I kind of like for myself, I like to do one and three for my hand, that works better. Do what works well for your hand in terms of the trill. Let's do that one more time. Then in measure eight, we have a grace note. That's that little tiny note uh, before the fifth, 16th note. Another A flat, it has a little line through it. And all that means is it's gonna be played right before. The C is gonna go with the left hand. So uh, second group of notes, beat two. So play it before and land together. Measure 13 has three grace notes. 
These are up for interpretation. Some pianists like to play the first note of the grace notes with the left hand note, so sounding like this. Some like to play it before, so the G and the E flat comes together, so that would sound like this. And some like to kind of play this and then play this and fit it in together. And have it a little more romantic. Then we have another trill in measure 15. That's the same as measure seven. So you're gonna start on the note. In measure 21, now instead of a mordant, Chopin puts a trill in that measure. So I'm gonna show you the trill. You just add a couple more notes. Maybe instead of three notes, you might do one, two, three, four, five. Measure 22, little grace note before the big beat three. So that measure would sound like this. Grace note right there. Measure 23, another trill. You're gonna do it just as we've been doing the other ones, starting on the beat. And just rolling right into those grace notes. Then in measure 26, there's another turn. And different pianists play this one different ways. Usually the turn in measure two, most pianists do start on the C and play it a five note thing. In measure 26, there's more variety in how pianists play this turn. So some pianists um, will start on the note and some will start on the note above and not play the E flat. So you will hear it both ways. Uh, I think the important thing is the last E flat is with your thumb. So there's different ways you could finger that. Usually I finger it, I start with three, four, three, two, one, five, and I kind of scoot my hand, sorry. Or you could do, let's see, four, three, two, one, five. But try to get the one on the black key and notice I'm moving my hand in as I'm playing that. So I'm starting maybe out here, but then my thumb comes up here. I'm not doing this and then slamming it in there. So the two different timings are going to look like this. So we'll do the start on the note first. Now we'll do the one starting on the F. So it's up to you. What do you feel for that moment? It's poco rubato, which means you can take a lot of time. So. It's a really nice moment in the piece. Then in the very next measure, we've got another mordant, another grace note. So on beat three there, measure 27, you're gonna have. grace note going up to the high G and then at measure 30 we have another one of those trills you could play trill as a mordant three notes or you can play uh, five or more notes here it is in slow motion with the mordant first and then here it is with trill so with the trill you're going to start the trill as soon as you play that B flat, just start, but then you want to end it on an A flat with that chord. So here's what it would sound like in slow motion. Here it is a little faster. So do what works with your hand. And then finally, we have the famous cadenza here at the very end. There's 13 of these little things. 13 of them fingering, three, two, four, one. If you listen to recordings, lots of pianists play more than 13. So with this little thing, just practice keeping a really nice firm hand position and start by just counting. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 is the different one. So the 13 is where you switch it. Five, four, two, one, two, You 
usually you're gonna rev up into the speed. So you might take the first four or so kind of slow. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Thank you for watching this short video on the ornaments and the trills in Chopin's E flat major nocturne. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, quick piano tips, also videos on piano technique and other piano literature. Thanks again for watching.